Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? For live. Are you ready? Let's do it. Live. Are you talk. ready? Live. This live. Are you talk. ready? Live. Live. Are you ready? Live. Yes, sir. Are you ready? For the word of the day, uh. the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Uh. Are you ready for live talk? Yeah. Because it's about time to set, set it, it on. on. Are you ready? Let's go. For the word of the day, hey. the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Say Are you what? ready for live talk? Yeah. Because it's about uh. time uh. to set it uh. on. Uh. Spirituality, uh, living in vital energy, uh, the universal language of spirituality. Uh, We're going all the way live with it. With live talk, increase your mentality, put away carnality, and increase your spirituality. Let's go. Live talk. Are you ready? This live talk. Are you ready? Live talk. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? Live talk. For the word of the day, uh, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready for a live talk? Because it's about time to set it off. It all, it all. Greetings and welcome to Live Talk. I am your host, Arthur Yeremiah, alongside my co-host, Minister Samuel. And welcome again. All right, my brother, how you doing first and foremost? I'm doing wonderful today. Great day, top of the day. Tell me about it, man. And and I'm just so thrilled about the show today. Yes, yes. <laughs> Before we get into that, because I'm not going to prolong this, brother, because there's a lot that we have to talk about today. There's a lot of information that we're going to be sharing today. But before we get there, I just want to give you a rundown of the show today. Uh, first, like always, we have a word of the day from the minister. Right after that, we're going to have a short commercial break. And after that commercial break, we're going to bring on our three guests for today. Now, we have three guests today. So we have a, a, a powerhouse of, mm -hmm. of, of you know, information and knowledge that we want to share with you today. So please stay tuned. If you have any questions, we're definitely going to try, try to open up the lines so that you'll be able to ask some questions. But right after that, we're going to go to another commercial break. And then we're going to come back. And hopefully at that time, we, it, <laughs> hey, it ain't going to be too much left, right, brother? <laughs> so we'll be pretty much at the point of closing out and then sharing with you next week's program as well. So with no further ado, Minister, what's the word of the day? Well, the word of the day, keeping in the spirit of the season that we're in in Kwanzaa today, we're going to be using the word faith for our word today. Okay. Um, and I'm going to begin with faith. Of course, in the spirit of Kwanzaa, it is Imani. But faith is a complete is having complete trust or confidence <clears throat> in someone or something. Faith is also considered um, faith is fidelity, and fidelity is loyalty, integrity, devotion, allegiance. Um. Faithfulness, dependability, trustworth, and trustworthiness. Faith. Now, it is. It has been said that faith is the um, evidence of things, the hope of things spiritual, or hope of things not seen. Mm -hmm. And I don't have the Bible with me, so I'm, I'm, I'm told that quote about faith. But what I wanted to bring into that was sometimes with faith, we leave it as blind faith, but it's not supposed to be a blind faith on just evidence things that are not seen. Your faith is supposed to be about the confidence and your integrity in making those things become seen, taking those unseen things in faith and manifesting them, your faith through reality. Yeah, I think having faith brings a forth, like what you just said, reality. Yeah. You know, oftentimes we, um, as you was alluding to, we look at things from a, a standpoint of um, just having faith and believing in something that sometimes is, uh, you know, I would say mystical in a way 
that <laughs> you know it, it has no logic to right. it and that's not the faith that we're, we're talking about right. we're talking about the faith that can produce a reality in your life can produce something that's more tangible in your life and when i think about it and i know we're going to get into this today so i'm not going to talk so much about it now but when i when i think about faith and, and thinking about our people i think about the stigma that has been placed on us as the people that keeps us divided, <clears throat> you know, not having trust and faith in one another. And I think we have to get back to that faith of trust, like you were saying in your definition, and believing in one another. Uh, because we oftentimes, <laughs> because we don't believe in one another, we're so easy to trust someone else someone or another else. people. And it has been proven that sometimes these people that we trust have been this, you know, they, they have they haven't shown the, the trust throughout history. Yeah. And there's a distrust in the uh, in how we perceive them in our everyday. Uh, in, we talk about it. Mm -hmm. We talk about how we don't trust these other people. But then again, we turn right around and give them our money. Yeah. You know, or we turn right around and, and, and do business with them. Put all our faith. But I see you. Yeah, but I see you. All someone has to do is say, don't deal with him. And immediately, I cut you off. We're talking about, that's why Kwanzaa is very important. Yeah. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. And we're not going to go so deep into this here because I do want to open this up to our guest today. So when we come back, I want to introduce you to the three guests that we have for you today to share some deep information. So we'll be right back. Hey, shalom and blessing, y'all. This is Arthur Yeremiah Israel coming to you live. Listen, I'm so excited because my ebook version of The Spiritual Significance of a Name is now available. You can go to my website today at, at www.yeremiahisrael.com. Now, this ebook is pretty much available anywhere and everywhere that ebook is sold. I'm so excited about that because the ebooks are sold internationally, but I would like for you to go to my website at www.yeremiahisrael.com, pick up your copy, or you can go ahead and download the ebook version of it. Whether you're on a plane, whether you're traveling, whatever you're doing, pick up this copy. It's on a $4.99. It's not going to break your pockets and not going, you know, break the bank. So go ahead and get the copy of this ebook now, today, $4.99, go to YeremiahYisrael.com and truly become blessed because it will truly put you on a path to defining your true purpose. Until next time, peace and prosperity. Well, welcome back to Live Talk. And like mentioned before, um, at this time, we're going to introduce our three guests. And we're going to start off with our in-studio guest. I'm going to have the minister um, bring him in properly. All right. Yes, it is certainly a pleasure because we have him live in studio with us today. Um, his brother is actually an African historian. He's a father, a husband. He's an educator, a teacher, someone who is seriously devoted and committed his life to the principles that we're going to be discussing today, not just discussing them, but actually living them, but then being able to not only live them, but teach others, but then actually teach them through a living example. So it's certainly a pleasure today to invite or welcome our brother, Ajama, Ajamu Nishe, to live talk today. Welcome. And how are you doing today, sir? Doing well. Doing well, thank you. Awesome. 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 All right. So we do have two more guests I want to bring on as well <clears throat> before we get this conversation started. The next guest has studied co-ops for 10 plus years. Um, she is also a part of a co-op and understand how cooperative economics mm -hmm. work. She's a public speaker, a teacher, a mother and wife live from New Orleans. I like to introduce Cooperative Specialist, Tamaya Israel. Welcome to the show, sister. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm going to try to get my video on here, but my uh, desktop needs some sharing permission. So I, I appreciate the opportunity and being here, and I will be on camera here in just a moment. Okay, no problem, sis. And last <clears throat> but not least, this next guest has been in the financial industry for 15 plus years. Her background is in accounting and commercial loans. She is also a Haitian descent, of a Haitian descent. I know we talked you about this a little bit. <laughs> She's a public speaker and influencer, mother and wife. And anytime we talk about economics and money, we must have this sister on. <laughs> I introduce to you the renowned Miss Finance Pro, Abigail. Welcome to the show, Queen. Peace be upon you, brothers. <laughs> it's an <laughs> honor to be in your uh, presence virtually. And I must say, I am loving the attire. You all look superb. I see the Kanara. And I'm excited to be on the show today. All right. We welcome you. And we're excited for you to be here as well. All right. So we're going to get right into this here. You know, we, we're going we're gonna to go straight to the historian. Uh, when we're talking about, we want to open up a little bit about Kwanzaa. And that's something that we, um, it's been instituted into our culture. And what I want to do at this time, um, I want to ask you to just give us a little background on Kwanzaa and just kind of bring us kind of up to date, like as far as when it started, um, you know, who invented it, uh, why you think it was invented at that time. All right. Um, the, from my knowledge, the individual that started Kwanzaa was Dr. Karinga in 1966. And Kwanzaa was a, um, it was a way of trying to bond, I guess, the African community here or African descendant community here with the continent, but also to, to bring in values that were not uh, of European origins. So Kwanzaa was a way to just kind of bring the community back stronger um, through the seven principles, the, the um, Nguzu Zaba, and just to kind of get the community back on a track that was not necessarily um, going into any type of belief system or anything like that. It was a secular type of attempt by him to just lay out some principles and then the community would just adopt them and implement them. That's the most important point, implementation of them. And then um, that might actually uh, push the community forward. So um, I know for me, I grew up in, in New York. Um, I grew up in an area. Um, I grew up, I, I was born in Queens, but my family's from Harlem. So in Harlem, Kwanzaa was really big. And I remember going to a lot of Kwanzaa events in Harlem um, off of 125th Street and Common Avenue. And it was, it was intense for me because um, I didn't have that, that European, you know, Santa Claus, elves, reindeer, and all that. I didn't have that. Um, I had Kwanzaa. So that's all I knew. Um, and then, of course, when you go to school, you get, you know, indoctrinated into other things. And other kids are telling you, you know, about Santa Claus and all that stuff. But it was easy for me to deflect that because I already had Kwanzaa. And already had um, there was an attachment there between me and Kwanzaa. There was a, a, a you know happy moments, um, good moments, uplifting moments. So um, there was no way to separate me from Kwanzaa because psychologically it was a good thing. So yeah, and I, and I'm noticing that with the with the I hate to use the word Christmas, but uh, on on this type of platform, but. Uh, with people who celebrate that, they have a connection because they're, they, they, they remember something happy or significant that happened at an event that was labeled Christmas. Well, I, like I said, I didn't have that. I had the Kwanzaa. 
So um, I don't know. I, I, I assume that all black people, uh, you know, naively, I assume that all black people did Kwanzaa. And then I realized uh, as I became an adult and started traveling um, and, and going to different places, that's not the case. That's not. And then I thought I'll be body over in Africa <laughs> was celebrating Kwanzaa. I, I really thought them brothers over there was doing it. And uh, as I became very familiar um, with doing business over there and, 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 and dealing with nonprofits on that side, they have no idea some, some of those Africans what Kwanzaa is, even the ones that live in Kenya. So another, and the reason why I mentioned that audience is because in Kenya, um, you have key Swahili speakers. And Kwanzaa, the principles are key Swahili, the, each principle, each name, like Umoja, um, today's Imani, the, that's key Swahili. Even those speakers are like, we know what that means, but we don't know what Kwanzaa is. So uh, hopefully I answered your question thoroughly. Yeah. And, and, and the thing was, mm -hmm. I know us being here in America as a people, and you know, been taken away from you know our land, our mm -hmm. culture, and the, and the ways and and how we we operate and did things as a people. Um, I can see where um, um, Dr. Karenga mm -hmm. um, tried to implement something that can bring us kind of back together as one, based off of cultural principles. Because when, mm -hmm. like you mentioned, Christmas. What would you see say the difference? Like, because I know um, we like Christmas been a part of my upbringing. Um, that's something that I was taught. However, you know, as you get older and wiser, you start to learn, you know, about your history and what, you know, what you what been taught to you that may not have been in line with, you know, your culture, your belief or even with with the most high. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So what would be some of those differences if, if a person was to ask you like Kwanzaa and Christmas, what would, what would be the distinction between the two? Well, um, I will say that Kwanzaa is definitely not uh, a black Christmas, okay. definitely not a black Christmas. And it's definitely not a substitute for Christmas. It's, it's, it's separate. Good point. I'll um, stop you because. A lot of people believe that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. They, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah, I'm aware of that. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, like I said, I, it, I, it is what it is. It is what it is. I, yeah, definitely uh not on the platform to create any enemies, but man. <laughs> you just have to be yeah, right. I, I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be honest. You know, it's it's then not a black Christmas, it's not a substitute for Christmas, it's a separate event, it's a cultural event. And um, culture is really um, big, I'm noticing, on the continent. So your culture is, is, is everything. So everything stems from the culture, you know, from an African perspective. So it's not from my perspective, it's from an African perspective. When you're dealing with people on the continent, their culture comes first and everything else comes second. I got I got one more yeah. I got exactly. one more question for you before uh -oh. I, I open up. Is that um when I I guess want to chime in? Um, I did, and if you hear a a little one in the background, I am <laughs> hi handsome, caring for my my three month old. So he's a little excited to to be on the show. <laughs> but what I wanted to just chime in when we're talking about the history of Kwanzaa and what Dr. Karinga was doing, right? This was founded in 1966 when the, uh, the black struggle and the black community was still um, something that we were dealing with. We're fighting for our rights. We're fighting for our identities. You know, we are fighting to build and protect our community. And so Kwanzaa, in retrospect was a, a way to help build the, the black community and also build the black family, which is something that we're still dealing with today, um, which is what makes me a huge supporter of that understanding uh, the principles behind it and what the true motive uh, was and is. Okay. Um <clears throat> I'm going to ask you something. Um, one, one other thing, and, and then I want to 
kind of go down and, and, and then talk about the, um, the seven principles. What are some of the myths that you have heard about Kwanzaa? And because when it comes to a lot of people, <clears throat> especially like our people, like some of the myths are, you know, centered around, you know, it being something spooky or, you know, um, calling upon the dead, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. Can you share with us a little bit of some of those myths and then try to, I mean, kind of dispel some of that based on how some people may think? Yes. Um, first, uh, Kwanzaa is not a religious holiday, so it has nothing to do with religion. Um, any type of um, religion on the continent uh, or spiritual system on the continent, religion, same thing, I guess, or, or however you want to look at it, because I know that's an iffy subject there. <laughs> Uh, but it, it, if you're looking at the United States, it has nothing to do with the Abrahamic faiths mm -hmm. at all. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. All right. And then it's not black magic. I'm going to say that one more time. It's, it's not <laughs> black magic. All right. So I don't know. I guess that would be a Hollywood type of indoctrination to our people thinking that everything from Africa is evil because they don't know what it is. So therefore they don't know what it is. So they label it black yeah. magic. Mm -hmm. It's not black magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But a lot of people think that. And then I, I think another uh, uh, misnomer is the fact that because um, I've seen people, uh, they've written books, they've written novels and, and books about how Kwanzaa somehow is trying to destroy Christianity. Mm. Yeah, I've seen that. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Um, and, you know, once again, you know, the, the intention of the individual is, is, is everything. So can you have people at Kwanzaa that are there for other intentions? Yeah. Yeah. Can you have people in church with other intentions? Yes. Definitely. <laughs> Can you have people in temples with other, mm -hmm. yes, synagogues, mm -hmm. uh, you name it, uh, masjids, whatever. They have bad intentions. So um, those are some of the, the things that I hear. Mm -hmm. um, it hurts because it's like everything um, cultural that de deals with Africa is deemed negative or, you know, it's magic or, or whatever. Um, and, 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 and it, it, it if you don't know, then then I would advise just reading, checking it out, and, and then be coming to terms with, with that knowledge um, and go from there. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with the seven principles. Um, I, I really don't. Um, I mean, and once you make it a part of your life, then you automatically have other things that you have inputted in your brain that you go to. So it doesn't take away from anything. Um, I never went to jail for practicing Kwanzaa or never been charged with a crime or, or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's 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 mind boggling. It's mind boggling. I mean, and sometimes even with the attire I have on, people think I'm some type of voodoo doctor or, or voodoo. That's that's not the case at all. Like, I don't even know how to practice black magic, even if I wanted to, let's just say, hypothetically, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. I don't know how that works. I, I really don't. So, but you can't tell that to an individual that has that in their mindset already. You, you can't, you, I'm, I'm noticing that. You can't really say anything because they're going to be like, oh yeah, he's, he's just saying that. Oh, okay. All right, brothers and sisters. I guess. But anyway. Was that you, Abigail, trying to chime in? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because oftentimes a lot of people will um, point to the candles when they refer to that. Um, they'll say, oh, well, it's a black candle and a red candle. And it's like, okay. But churches are very well known for using white candles, right? And they said it's purity. If people research with black magic, they use white candles and a whole lot of white candles. So it's like, OK, so you're saying the candles is an issue, but in marriage, you're burning a white candle. White candles are highly used in black magic, um, you know, a christening, a lot of white candles, certain mass. When the Catholics do mass, they got the church filled with all of these candles. So it's like we have to then question 
things that we've done in Christianity, if we're going to question that and say it's black magic or, you know, today is a new calendar year, right? It's New Year. What are people, what are, what are the people that are, were born in North American, uh, America, what are they doing today? Eating collard greens, eating black eyed peas, eating cornbread. Why? Because they want good luck. Well, how much good luck have we gotten eating them collard greens? Because we've been eating collard greens and black eyed peas January 1st for a very long time. And what has changed? Especially in our community, right? The collard greens are supposed to be money. The cornbread is supposed to be gold. So with all that we've eaten, where's the money and where's the gold? And why don't we question that? Let somebody sweep your feet. What are they going to say? Oh, hey, don't sweep my feet. What happens when they sweep your feet? We say you we, you going to jail. <laughs> we don't consider that mindset spooky. We have to question then a lot of our beliefs. I just wanted to kind of hop in something. on that note I, too. My magic, yeah, go right there. So sound like magic to me. Hey, it's just you know I appreciate the direction that we're going in in this conversation because we tend to like mix up, and I say we, people in general tend to mix up the power of practice. And what I see in the value of the Kwanzaa principles is lifting out the power of practice. And they miss, they mislabel those practices as something that's either like, like sis just described, witchcraft or black magic. And it has nothing to do with that. When you think about the principles that are embedded in, in Kwanzaa, And the practices, these practices are intrinsic to us as a people in our nature and our culture. And so I'm just kind of reflecting back on the comment that our brother shared about how in Africa, in these nations that speak key Swahili, that these practices are just really embedded in the culture. They don't need a special holiday to remember these things. These are part of how they operate day to day. And so for us as a people in a different nation, we got to build in these practices that are in Kwanzaa to help us stay embedded in our culture, stay rooted to our people and have that faith in each other that we can actually do some things in our community. So I'm just appreciating the direction and how we really got to just like be clear. It's not about being in uh, dead rituals. It's about being into high minded spiritual practices and cultural practices. Yes, ma'am. Yes, indeed. And I'm going to jump in because we want this to be an educational show. Like when people look at the Kanara and the Masu with the candles and they see black and, and, and think these crazy thoughts. Can you just share us some information on the colors and why they're being used? Okay, I'll do my best. Um, <laughs> as far as the colors is concerned, the black you know, obviously stands for the people. Right. And then the red. No, wait a minute. So it's not voodoo. No, it's not. <laughs> but that's what they say. Yeah. But because everything. Because they don't you, understand. But if you think about it, if you're inside your mother's womb, it's, it's black. It's dark. It's, okay. You know, I'm just saying, but I'm not trying to get metaphysical or anything like that, <laughs> but black is black. Yeah. Right. So it, it represents the people. Doesn't mean the people are all black. Black. Right. You don't like black, the color. Mm-hmm. They could come in different, but they're black in, in I guess, or origin. If you want to say African in origin or whatever you want to use, because I'm, I'm learning now that some people don't even like the term Africa no more. Right. They don't like that term. They're like, no, I don't want to hear that. That's not the original name. And I'm like, I know what the original name is. But if I say the original name, most people don't understand right. the original name. Right. They don't understand that. So mm-hmm. I, I'm trying to educate, not, <laughs> you know, but anyway. Um, so the red, from my understanding, stands for the blood that has been shed by our people through oppression, through the, the two different uh, myapas, there's two different ones. There was a European one, there was an Arab one, and, and all the turmoil and pain and everything. Oh, well, that's in the red. Right, that's in the red. Uh, from my understanding, that's what I was told. And then the green is, is real simple. Um, it's land. Because yep. if you have the land, if you have possession of the land, Everything else is wealth. Prosperity. Everything else is wealth. Everything is built off of the land. Yep. So the green for me stands for the land. Now, I remember my grandmother said that was like the most important one. That's what she told me. She said, no land, no wealth. Mm. You, you broke. Mm. You have no land. You are broke. You, 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 can't, go, you can't go nowhere. Right. You're stuck. Right. And I was like, man, 
that's a thought of the ownership. So the that's what the colors mean to me. Um, as far as anything outside of that, now I do know that these colors are most prevalent when they pulled up artifacts. So any type of ancient artifacts, if they if they have any colors on it, it's predominantly red, black, and green for some reason. Yeah. But other than that, um, yeah, I don't think the P I never saw anybody light candles and then like uh, whatever apparitions were coming from it and flying around the room. And, <laughs> and, 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 you know, I, I, I never saw that coming okay. up. I never felt intimidated or scared. Well, <clears throat> we're at the top of the hour. I want to go ahead and wow. get into the wow. principles wow. of Kwanzaa. We talked about a little bit of the background. Uh, we tried to we dispelled a lot of the myths that has you know surfaced around. So let's talk a little bit about the principles. So let's, if if you will, um, let's give a rundown of the principles starting with with night one. So the I guess day one would be uh, Umoja, okay. which is unity. Um, did you want me to explain that? Let's go or, down the list. We, um, we, goes, okay. Yeah. Let's go and down then the, the second one <clears throat> is um, Kuchi. Katulia, which is self-determination. Then you have Ujima, collective work and responsibility. And then you have Ujama, which is cooperative economics, Nia, purpose. Uh, Kumba, which is creativity. And then, you know, Imani, which is faith. Okay. Right. Awesome. But these are, like like I said, when, when, you, when you try to translate it into the English, it's, it, it doesn't come out exactly the way it should, but it's, it's close. And then also two people leave have interpreted it totally different than what Dr. Karinga interpreted it, if that makes sense. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about unity. Um, let's go a little deep into unity because we know as a people, we have been divided for a very long time. And it's due to the, you know, the miseducation. And, you know, when Dr. Um, Karinga came up with this, and I'm pretty sure he took that to, to mm -hmm. mind. Like, okay, you know, we, there's a lot of division that's mm -hmm. going on within our culture and our people. So unity was one of the first ones he thought about and implemented. Now, when it comes to unity, based on how he explained it, what was, I mean, what that looks like. I mean, because <clears throat> we want to talk about it and we want to be able to implement it because we talked about, you know, it's important to implement these principles. So let's start with unity. Who want to who want to start first on that? Well, I'll jump into that one mm -hmm. um, with unity, because the one the, if you look at the purpose of quantity and unity, when <clears throat> like unfortunately when you with religion, and we're not knocking anyone's religion, mm -hmm. but Unfortunately for us as a people, specifically here in America and even on the continent, religion unfortunately has a coincidence of separating based on this religion, mm -hmm. that religion, and this religion. And they may all be calling on the same God, mm -hmm. but they have different practices. So you have a whole bunch of people. They can come and they celebrate Christmas, but they have different religions. So when it comes to community wise, we've, we're broken down because it's like the only time we'll unify will be say, to go to church and do a worship. Mm -hmm. But when mm -hmm. we leave church the following day, we don't come together as a people. Right. So Kwanzaa was a way, irregardless of what your religion was, you can come together in unity and practice these principles. Right. Because the principles are sound. Right. And you would think if you, if you follow any religion, these principles need to be found somewhere within whatever religion or faith that you have. Mm -hmm. And if you look, you'll find them in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that should be a, a unifying, that should be bringing us together, not separating us. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And you want to, you ladies, you want to chime in on that one? I do. Um, I just want to chime in because when I think about unity, what we've done and what our world has done to us is has separated us and divided us in meeting our needs. 
And what we see is our economy is structured based off people consuming rather than taking them them into accord and being self-sufficient and doing the collective work, the collective planning around meeting needs once the way we used to. And so I think this principle is really important in really thinking about how communities are organized around the collective space around how we meet our needs that's no longer at the forefront of our thought process because right now we want to go and just spin. We want to go do different things, Mm -hmm. but we have to really figure out how communities stay strong, people and families stay connected and unity and collective planning and having a shared goal is really critical. And at one point in time, we all considered how are we going to meet our needs this, this week? And nowadays, we're all individual in figuring out how to meet our individual needs. And so unity makes that burden a lot easier. (laughs) You want to chime in on that, brother? Yeah, as far as um, when I um, hear the word unity or umoja, I think two things come up. Um, and I, I actually wrote it down in my notes. Um, as a people, we lack trust. And I remember you had mentioned trust earlier mm-hmm. with one another. So therefore, I learned that I have to fix that in myself in order to implement Umoja. So I have to fix the, the, the distrust that I had um, with people that look like me or what have you. And um, I was able to do that very easily. Um, it took some time, but it, was, it, it wasn't hard. And then um, the mindset changed and then you, you kind of have relationships with people and then that build up that trust. Mm-hmm. And then once that trust is built within your own mind, then now you've solved that issue within your own mindset. So now I don't have a distrust with other brothers and sisters, regardless if they may be uh, someone that may appear to be uh, not trustworthy. If that makes sense. Mm-hmm. So I'm not looking at them. Like, oh, here comes that brother again. You know, I, I don't do that. It's not even in my mindset. So that's number one. Number two, um, we don't see each other as part of the one. So what is the one? That would be the one universal community. That's our community as, as one. So regardless of where you're from or, 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 or what have you, um, I'm looking at the physical aspects of it or the ethnic aspects of it. We're still part of the one. So what is the one? It, it's this big family um, and it's a worldwide family because we're all over the world. Um, I was talking to a brother. He's from Ghana, but he lives in Sweden. And I'm like, wow. And I said, there's brothers up there. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, there's a bunch of brothers up here. And then in Denmark and Norway and Finland, I was like, I didn't even know those brothers up there. That was all white. Like and, snow. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, um, the point I'm trying to, I'm not, I'm not, advocate and go to Europe. I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying uh, that we're all over the planet and we're part of that one. So for me, I'm part of the one. So therefore, when I see a, a person, then they're part of the one. I don't, I don't have that discord like, oh, you know, who's that? And I could care less if you're Jamaican, Haitian. I don't care if you're Nigerian. I don't give a darn. I don't care. I don't care. I see a black skin. I see I, I'm looking at another person that, that looks like me. They're of African descent. That's it. That's it. That's it. I, I, I'm going to trust you more than I trust anybody else on this planet. Why? Because I know the history of other people. So for our people, I'm like, it's as crazy you might sound and, and difficult to work with as you may be. I'm still going to trust you over anyone else because my mindset is there. Now, some people say that's 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 not good. That, that, could, that could end up bad for you. Well, I mean, it's either that, either trust one another or go trust another group, like you said earlier. Yeah, trust right. another group. What, what I'm going to do with that? Because that, that hasn't helped. Just like the sister said, that, that hasn't helped any over the years. So um, I think for me, unity is that, is that. Once I changed it in myself, then it's an outward expression. And then I don't have issues with people. Um, yeah. <clears throat> You know, I, I kind of look at it um, and, and to everybody, you know, point when we when we think about unity within our community it's all about an example, sh- mm-hmm. uh, showing that example. You know, we MOP, you know, for instance, you know, one of the things we do when we go out into the community, 
whether we're cleaning up the community or what have you, is a way of engaging people without actually engaging them. Mm -hmm. So they can see the unity mm -hmm. that's, that's, you know, they can see it. You know, it's tangible, mm -hmm. like, wow, look at them. Mm -hmm. And if, if they can do it, we all can do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to start, like you say, with self. Mm -hmm. We have to acknowledge some of the plights that are going on in our community and begin to act them out, you know, come together with like-minded people so that we can be an influence for the others to be able to see it. And that's how we make that change and create that unity. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to go to mm -hmm. our next <clears throat> word. I mean, that's night one. Mm -hmm. um, night two is? Um, Kuji Kachalia. Kuji Kachalia. Yeah. That's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so who wanna um who wanna start on this one? I I can start. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Sir. Real quick. No, I was waiting on the sisters. I, I was <laughs> trying to. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had the mute button. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And so with Kuji Chagalia, which when we partook in Kwanzaa this year. We uh, had our son who's graduating take the floor on this because it does talk about self-determination. And, and I think that this is this night and, and just understanding this night is very important, right? Because it's saying that you get to define who you are. We define ourselves. Um, you create, we create for ourselves. Um, most importantly, speak for ourselves. Right. Because there is a saying, um, even with um, jobs, sometimes that if you don't work your dream, you'll be working someone else's. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you don't define yourself, society will definitely define you because you're going to go out there and you're going to get a job and whatever job, whoever takes you, that's who you become. Mm -hmm. That's true. But that's not defining yourself. That's it. <clears throat> time in on that too. Oh yeah. Um <clears throat> I think one thing I learned from Kuji Kachalia is that um at one point I tended to lack significant logic and the ability to make decisions on my own using logic and evidence. So at one time, you know, when I was younger, I wasn't able to do that. So Kuji Kachalia actually allowed me to refine that or fine tune it, I should say. And, and then I'm able to <clears throat> implement that. And then like you say, um, like my son or my grandchildren, they can see that. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, he knows how to take information in and then he knows how to think about it. And then he might wait a day or two, but then there's a decision made after that. So there's like a process. So they get that. And I think the Kuji Katalia is, is one of those things that, that helped me um, develop that. Also, too, I know back home, um, maybe some people might be kind of shallow, but um, they usually talk about like, 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 who are you? Like, where are you from? Like, mm -hmm. but like, you know, and then I guess now you could do DNA testing and all of that. And then, by the way. I, I heard some brother tell me, oh, yeah, you can't trust the DNA because that's from the that's from the white man and all that. And, and I'm like, well, actually, the DNA test to check to see which um, ethnic group you would be part of was actually created by a guy in Senegal named Dr. Antop uh, uh, Diop. So Dr. Sheikh Anta Diop was the one that started this this test that, that you can test in your DNA to determine exactly where you're from and so forth, you know, through the blood and the haploids and the chromosomes and all that stuff. So he, he came up with that. It was a black man. It wasn't a white person, hmm. you know, and he had to do that because he was trying to prove a point with some um, human artifacts that he had found. Mm -hmm. He was trying to prove a point and he had to come up with something. So that way no one can say, oh, no, you just made it up yourself. No, this brother no, was very intelligent. And he was able to prove that whatever artifacts he had in his possession were from a certain area and they belonged to a certain group of people. Because he could take it down yeah. to, to DNA. <laughs> right now, you know, I'm not advocating <laughs> DNA tested. I'm not uh, any test right now. I'm just going to leave that alone. But anyway, um, but uh, I do uh, advocate, you know, who are you? You know, know who your what your faults are, know your strengths. 
and 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 then try to get rid of the faults and then you know focus on the strengths. Yeah. All right. And I just want to tune in briefly on this principle because it reminds me of like what's really needed. We tend to, and I'm speaking from a community, community standpoint, and community businesses are put into our, our spaces. Uh, businesses like Walmart or petrochemical businesses here in New Orleans. And these things are placed in neighborhoods and communities without the say-so of the individuals that are impacted by it. And so when I think about this principle, it reminds me of how um, cooperative business models help to make and ensure uh, individuals can name what things they need in their community, that being able to speak for yourself about what services you need in your neighborhood, being able to, you know, really identify what your needs are and not have others coming into your community, capitalizing and meeting their dollar, their, you know, their, their dollar values rather than you actually meeting your need. So speaking, being able to speak for yourself and say, this is what my neighborhood should look like. This is what my community should be made of. I think it's a really important essence in this business, in, in this, this principle. And I think that's kind of sums it up, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. standing up for ourselves, you know, being able to speak mm -hmm. out. And like my sister just said, you know, looking at some of the fights in our community and, you know, looking to go to the right authority to say, hey, you know, this is what's, what's going on. How can we fix this? You know, mm -hmm. oftentimes we sit back and we we see our community just destroyed. And, you know, like like I mentioned earlier, you know, we see people uh, throw paper everywhere. You know, we we just sit back and we think somebody else is supposed to come out and clean it up. It's our community. Why are you why we're not cleaning it? Right. <laughs> All right. All right. So let's point. Point. let's go to um night three. Let's go to uh, the next uh principle. There would be Ujima. Collective work and responsibility. Uh, I guess that's getting back to what, what we're saying. It seems like it all ties in. Go right ahead, man. It, it is about the community and it it it, it ties in with the previous one with sub identity. You have to know who you are, what your community is. When you define in order to be able to build in and bring in your community, you have to identify with it first of all. What's good about it? And if it has deficiencies, don't let someone else determine what's wrong within your community right. or what's wrong with you or what's right with you. Mm -hmm. You have to make that decision. Mm -hmm. We as a community make that decision. And then when we make that decision collectively, we can fix it. If education is a problem within our community, then it becomes our responsibility to educate those in our own community. Right. Because if we allow someone else to come in with a philosophy that's not beneficial to the community, it's going to benefit those who are coming into the community. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not going to benefit those that's within the community. Right. Like you said, with, with the economics, community-wise, if we need collective within our community, it should start from within. Mm -hmm. So it will help our community. Right. But if we leave our community and then we look back and complain about it, well, whose fault is it? That was the purpose mm -hmm. to say, no, don't don't look back and complain, but look forward and fix. Mm -hmm. That's take a responsibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Collective work and responsibility. Mm -hmm. And then one of you ladies want to chime in on that one? I'm going to try to keep this one brief. <laughs> 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 um, because this one is just so in alignment like with the work that I do in co-op development. And look, seeing individuals that come together to get into a shared business and really owning the fact that, one, they own that business together. I work with individuals who are worker-owned cooperative models and seeing people who have never actually owned anything come into the knowledge of ownership and then sharing in that, sharing in that work through them being collective owners is also another like really big process. But I, I just want to like identify that most of what we are experiencing in our community is because of some industry or industries and or systems that are taking and extracting from our community. 
if we as a people identify with this principle in terms of collective work and responsibility, it is us that are responsible for meeting our needs in, com in community. Um, there's, a, there's a phrase in this particular principle um, in terms of what uh, Dr. Kariga shared is that to build and maintain our community together and make our brothers and sisters problems, our problems, and then to solve these problems together. Well, businesses exist to solve problems. So if we are the people that are owning these businesses collectively, then we can work collective to solve our own problems. So I can go on and on about this one, but I, I, I'm leaving it at that. <laughs> Okay. We're going to want you to chime in, sister, I think on the next one, definitely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you, you can save a, a little bit of that. <laughs> Anybody else want to chime in on that one? Yeah, I, I really don't have much to say. I mean, you guys really said it. I mean, because the only thing that I got from it all these years is just this acting as a group, mm -hmm. as a collective group. Yeah. Like that was really important. I remember going to Kwanzaa events and then they would separate the children from the adults. And then they would take the oldest, I guess, child or teenager, and then they would say, well, we're going to um, organize something. We're going to do something to together right now. We're going to either take the trash out. We're going to do whatever, mm. take do something together. And then that was like the, 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 the introduction to community projects because the adults were on the other side talking about community projects. And we as children were in there figuring out, okay, what, what trash are we going to take out? What are we going to do to help out the adults? Mm. So it, it, at first I thought it was just a, I, I mean, you really don't know, but you know, when you're, when you're a child, but when you look at it, you're like, oh, they were actually, you know, indo not indoctrinating us in a negative way, but they were actually That's causing true. us to work together yeah, and training us yeah. to work together <laughs> as a group. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. yeah. And, and I, and I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. So I, like I said, I, I don't I yeah, working with, with the community um, or speaking out against people within the community that's not doing what they're supposed to do, that I don't have a problem with that because they've been taught that. <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do. Yes, so, indeed. yeah. All right. So let's go to this next principle. <laughs> What's the next principle? Well, the next principle is woo, is um, Ujama, which is <laughs> cooperative economics. All right. So what I'm going to wow. do at, at, at this time, I already know Ooh. who's going to take this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sister Ma, I'm, I'm going I'm to give you um, the flow and this here to share with us on this one. Indeed. And thank you so much. I, again, I just really enjoy this conversation <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, our principles in Kwanzaa, um, they are, again, I'm lifting out the idea that we are, are people and these things are intrinsic to our behavior. And these aren't things that are, we are supposed to be dealing with just at this time of year. Cooperative economics are practices that we share in raising, our, in raising our families. We share cooperative practices in economics and sending our children to college. Um, we do these things in our potlucks, in our communities. So we have a number of examples of cooperative economics and cooperative business practices in our history, specifically here in the United States, post-slavery, post-Civil War, our people had to really figure out how to build communities together. And so we saw them pooling their resources, pooling their pennies and creating mutual aid societies and mutual aid clubs. And these are all built off of the principles of, you know, shared and cooperative economics. Last piece I want to introduce right now, though, is that what is happening, there is a wave of people that are lifting out cooperative business models, which is not a new business model. There is a business model that's been in practice for years here in this country and other countries. But what has happened and what we're seeing is that our people who have these values, who have these principles, are clueless when it comes to understanding how to connect to each other in cooperative economics, aren't grabbing hold to the idea or ideas that cooperative economics can actually bring in. And I want to share two things, and then I'll pause here. One is the definition of a cooperative business, and it takes into uh, consideration all these principles. A cooperative business is an autonomous association of persons united voluntarily to meet their common 
economic, social, and cultural needs and aspirations through jointly owned, jointly owned and democratically controlled enterprises. So these businesses are there to help build in meet, meeting the needs in community by people who are actually members and owners. And then the last piece is the value of the cooperative values. Cooperatives are based on the value of self-help, self-responsibility, democracy, equality, equity, and solidarity. And in tradition of their founders, cooperative members believe in ethical values of honesty, openness, social responsibility, and caring for other, others. So I really want us as a people to take on this idea of cooperative economics and understand that we can create businesses that add value to our community, because what we've been exposed to is businesses that take away, extract, and damage our communities permanently. And we can change that. Indeed. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, <powerful>. ma <laughs> mm -hmm. now, now that's powerful. <clears throat> when we think about it, um, I, 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 yes, ma'am? I, I, I was agreeing with you. Very, very powerful. I love the way um, she ended that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, we know when it comes to economics, um, that's one of the things, um, somewhat, I mean, that's up your alley. Um, Abigail, when we talk about finance and economics, um, but I think the biggest part of when we talk about cooperative economics is the cooperative side of it. And that's the side I think we get away from. Uh, we, we oftentimes we, we go out on our own to try to, you know, get money or what have you. Um, you know, scriptures say two is better than one. Mm -hmm. And if, if we was to think more community based or cooperative, uh, we'll be more successful. And I think if you look back at even at um, um, Tulsa, <clears throat> you Black know, Wall Street, right? Black Wall Street, mm -hmm. you know, when you when, even when you look at that, you have to say there's some type of cooperative economics that's going on there because the money is circulating mm -hmm. within the same place. Mm -hmm. and it's not really it's not going outside. You got banks. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got stores. I mean, you got barber shops. You got everything you need right within the community. So all the money is doing is circulating within the community. Mm -hmm. We have to kind of get back to building and creating that community that we can do somewhat of the same things that we have done in the past. And I think, again, it, that deals with trust and it deals with education and knowing. And that's why even talking about Kwanzaa and the principles of Kwanzaa is very important. And it's something that we always need to, I think, implement in, in our lives because these principles is something that we can apply. And if we apply them correctly, we'll be more successful and we'll be more prosperous mm -hmm. as a people. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So think about that, like going and thinking about cooperative economics. Oh, it is. <laughs> and I, I, that's one of my favorite ones, the cooperative <laughs> economics. And I like to make it. The principle of Ujamaa is it's a practice. We once we like all of these things are symbols, but the key is practice. And the, in order for us to be collectively um, to profit collectively, for us to come together, it becomes action. Something that we do <laughs> is when we we take our dollars mm -hmm. and that cooperative economics. The action part is. What are we going to do with them? Mm. It's very easy to spend them with, say, the Walmarts or these corporations that come in and they destroy our community. But we have to consciously, Kwanzaa is about us consciously making an effort that when we take that dollar, we go make sure, we go go, if we got to go across town to put that dollar in another black business hand, mm -hmm. because we want him to be profitable. Because right. then he's going to take that dollar and put it in his hand. Mm -hmm. And make him profitable, then he's gonna bring it back and put it on this side profitable. Mm -hmm. And we have that power, but the, when we form the businesses, we if we support the businesses that we start, then we become independent. But when we take that consumerism, and it's very easy to just take to someone else's community, mm -hmm. and then we wonder why our communities suffer. Right. It's because we're not practicing the cooperative economics. We have to make that conscious effort of before I spend this, 
can I put that dollar into my community where it's going to benefit my community and benefit me right. and then keep it coming back? And that's mm-hmm. a conscious decision that we make, which that's the thing I look at Kwanzaa. It's supposed to be a conscious decision that we make mm-hmm. every day. Right. Yeah, I agree. Well, we are, um, that, that, that was well said. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, man. I know you're going to let me get in on this cooperative economics. economics. (laughs) (laughs) You can't slide that one past me. There's a few on that slide. (laughs) Although that was well said. I mean, well said on everyone's end. Um, I'm sorry. I have my four-year-old here who uh, wants me to feed him. I'm telling you, it's a part of cooperative economics, right? I'm I'm keeping children so that my... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> daughter can provide for her household. But what's important is this. We know that cooperative economics works. It works in every community. There is not like when we see the Asian communities or even mm-hmm. like the Indian communities, they are operating off of cooperative economics. Uh, the Jewish community, the ones that come to, they are some of the most powerful people right yes. now. And they will tell you they built their wealth off of cooperative economics. It is important. And then they will tell you it's going out of their way to support one another. A woman could know how to bake her own cake. It's not going to stop her from supporting that Jewish bakery. If you understand what I'm saying, she know how to bake her own cake. Yet she's still going to go out of her way to make sure that that dollar touches that business. And we have to understand that because sometimes as a people, we want to make excuses where an excuse does not fit. You need to be uncomfortable so that we as a people can get comfortable. And if you are not going out of your way to support someone that looks like you, then shame on you. Because what are you doing? Either we are going to build cooperatively or we are going to continue to lose cooperatively. So we have to pick a side. Either we build cooperatively or we continue to have nothing cooperative. Well said. That's it. That's it. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) And we wonder why we don't have anything. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) You know, I could give a, a real life scenario. Um, like right now, me and a, and a brother over in Lagos actually started a textile business. And how did we do that? It was real simple. I thought about how the exchange rate between the U.S. dollar mm-hmm. and the, 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 the near or the Niger over in, in Nigeria, how there's a there's, like our dollar is way more than their money. So I got with him and I said, well, I already wear African clothing every day. And it's 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 coming from your ethnic group, the Yoruba. And I said, do you have a tailor? He said, yes. I said, great. So I started pushing orders to him. And I found out that I was able to get those orders extremely fast because he had a contact within UPS over there that could get the stuff out pretty quick and no one's going to mess with it. And so forth. The point I'm trying to make is over more than one third of my income is going to this man. And then some people say, oh, well, he's rich and you're not negative. <laughs> he's my co-partner. So what now he's doing, he's going out buying vending machines. He's going out buying this and that. He's going out doing whatever he can on that side. I'm over here trying to figure out what is something overpriced over here that someone may get over the, uh, from over there. And then he can send it even cheaper and then we can sell it and, and so forth. The point I'm trying to make is the cooperative economics works. Now, some people say, well, you dealing with that man over there. You ain't dealing with no one here. No, that's not true, because the people that I'm dealing with here is based off of the money that I'm making over there. You see, so it, it, it all goes around in this big old circle. But you got to have the trust. Yep. And then you got to look at he's one with me. And then you're able to make this connection that is unbreakable. So that's real life right there. Um, uh, Buy black, support black. I I remember hearing that all my life, all my life. And people go, oh, that's that's negative. Oh, that's prejudice, racist. I said, man, you can say whatever you want. Everybody else doing it. 
Mm-hmm. But then when we do it as an issue, and the reason why there's an issue is because they know we're going to do it better. Right. All right. Um, uh, joint economic activity uh, uh, was a big thing. And then last but not least, uh, placing funds together, people pulling money together and then doing something with it or what have you. Okay. And then dominate industries, by the way. You got you to gotta find an industry like the Japanese did. They, they dominate the car industry. Yeah. Why can't we dominate an industry? Yeah. Just one. Yes, exactly. Just one <laughs> at first. And then, yeah. All right. So let's let's go to um, the next one um, is, is talking about <laughs> creativity. So um, if you want to go ahead, we're going we're gonna to try to we're going to try to you speak. skip the Kumba or you want to do Nia? It's up to oh, you. We got three more left. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So we got to do these three fast. Yeah, I know. I know. Real fast. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I, I got I got a timer from. Um, the the engineer. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I <laughs> so know. I, I, we need to we kind of zoom through these, and but I want everybody to to understand. I want to be able to go over each principle, um, because it's very important that we understand um, the the significance of these principles, and if we apply them to our lives, how important and, and how prosperous our life can be. So let's let's go to the next one. All right. So the next one is purpose. Nia. Right. right. <laughs> And then um, I, I'm I'm I don't you guys don't mind I'm real quick I'm, I'm make it real um, uh, as far as Nia is concerned uh, from what I understand uh, and and have implemented is traditional lifestyles and unions I'm gonna leave it like that that's what I got from Nia <laughs> traditional lifestyles and unions I'm gonna add one thing to that because <laughs> we talk about purpose. And mm. I wrote a book on defining your purpose. There you go. <laughs> no, you guys go. Go, go. Hey, it's, it's within the power of your name. A lot of times we don't understand the importance of a culture or spiritual name. Mm. And we have gotten away from that as well. Mm. And I, I don't want to go too deep in that to that because I want us to be able to close out on time. But that purpose, uh, see, that's one of the ones. I, I don't know how I forgot that one. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know either because I was like, you sure, brother? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to... Uh, the next one here. Oh, we're gonna go to Great. Oh. No one else got any input? No. I know we're trying to get through. I'm looking at a time. Oh, like, we, we have to do a recap. Go go right ahead to the next yeah. one. Okay, Kumba, creativity. Then the only thing I got is inventions and develop new technology. Anybody want to chime in real quick on that one? When we talk about creativity, I think that's a big one in our community. Um, you know, I, I think we lack. The, the consciousness of being God, mm. you know, creators, mm. and creativity is a key component to that. We're always looking for a job. We're always looking for somebody to provide for us, but we're never thinking about how to create for ourselves. Mm. So that's very important. I know we don't have a lot of time, and I know if, if we probably one of the sisters probably want to chime in. <laughs> They're probably saying we ain't, uh, Johnson, I we ain't got that much time. I can say something <laughs> real quick as far as um, creativity is you know understanding your your gift and using your gift your talent sometimes people try to downplay their their title talent um but if you can write well there's a lot of areas you can go in writing there's a lot of areas you can go in music um but it's just recognizing your gift and not being afraid to use it um another thing with creativity is um, within our community, making sure that you leave an impact so that the community is better than what you had and what you started with. Okay. So that's so let's creativity. Find, you find, find a need and fill it. When there's a need, mm-hmm. fill it. And that, that's creativity. If there's a need, fill that need. Create, create a solution. That's it. And then we, we, we come up on today <laughs> and we talked a little bit about it coming into the show. Um, but the money <clears throat> is that the last one, right? Yes. The then last one would be Imani faith. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Anybody real quick want to chime in on that one? <laughs> I'll, I'll do it real quick. Cause in the beginning, I, I have so many things going through, but, but a lot of times the, the scripture was the, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen, but people misunderstand that and what I'm, because they go on blind faith. Mm-hmm. If if you just take that evidence of substance, that I mean you hope for some 
but it's ever it's not seen. And then what they think is that well, I can pray that into existence. No, the faith is you working a plan. See if it's unseen. That's mean it's within your mind. And then you have to take that which you see in your mind and make it a reality. If that means putting it on paper, and then after you put it on paper, you create it. That's right. And then, like, see the Japanese, what they did, they were blown, bombed out of existence. But now they make cars for the whole world because mm-hmm. they put it in their mind and they create, they, they exercise their faith and made it into a reality. And that's what faith yeah. is about, making it a reality. Not something that we yeah. die for. Not something. We, it's not about waiting until you die. Right. It's about making it while you live. Right. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That, yeah. I, yeah. I agree, that's brother. Much, yeah. Yeah. There ain't much to say after that. <laughs> and I think I'm faith is honest. about, like we said, you know, just having that trust and trust mm-hmm. in one another. That's the only way we're gonna build and and and, and be prosperous. You know, within mm-hmm. our communities, is having that trust. Uh, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So at this time, I know we can't, we, we're not going to go to a commercial break, but we're going to get ready to um, close out. So first and foremost, um, this is for you, Yeremite. We, we're not going to go there yet. <clears throat> what I want to do at this mm-hmm. time, I, I want you to be able to, that's the last words and what you want to share with the listening audience. Um, you know, anything that, that you want to share at this time. Yeah, uh, basically, um you know, try to understand uh, culture or understand, you know, culture in a sense. Uh, we've been taken away from it or it's been uh, demonized or whatever you want to call it. Just try to understand that. And, um, you know, just uh, economic, um, like the sister said, cooperative economics is really big right about now. I think the next uh, battlefield is 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 dealing with wealth. Mm-hmm. It's not dealing with like physical, like I guess some of the brothers and sisters think that you know it's not it's not a physical battle, right? So <laughs> yeah, that's all I have to say. Okay. And I, oh, and I appreciate it. I appreciate you brothers for inviting me on. Um, I learned a lot, um, even though yes, I am a historian, I am a teacher, but um, I learned a lot. All right. So, so I'm going to go in order. Um, uh, dear Sister Tamar, um, how can people uh, follow you? Uh, do you want to leave any last words? <clears throat> Indeed. I'm grateful for sharing this space. This was a, a very enlightening conversation. And I just want to encourage people to revisit, rethink, and reclaim our cooperative practices because they are practices that we um, pioneered beyond and be before the development of this country. And Kwanzaa is a space for us to remember these practices, remember these principles and really deploy them um, so that we can galvanize around meeting our needs. And if ever there was a day to have a common purpose, I think meeting needs is a big piece around us really galvanizing our common, common needs. So um, folks can follow me on TMH financial.solutions. That's my website. Um, so that's TMH financial.solutions and they can visit that website and get all my other links. Thank you for having all right. me. All right. Thank you, sis. Yeah. And um, Ms. Finance Pro, <laughs> how can people follow you? Uh, any last words? Um, for the last words, and I just want to make sure um, so that I could touch on and uh, recognize today. Will I be able to touch on the Independence Day um, after break? Or, um, am I ending this with Kwanzaa or is this my last yeah, words in general? That's your last words. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry. Um, so <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll switch it because I do want to just share and recognize today um, because it is Patient Independence Day. Although I like to recognize it as, um, you know, just African Independence Day, Mm -hmm. right? Because to me, this is the only Independence Day that people of African descent really should recognize. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because when we understand independence, we understand that comes with a fight. That means you fought for your freedom and you won. And other histories, they had to beg, wait, and plead. 
we know that they freed us in North America for their own demise. And they, and they continue to make sure that we truly were not free. It was just free enterprise. But Haitian Independence Day, it's a historic human achievement, right? Haiti to this day is the only nation in history founded by slaves that freed themselves, literally. And we know that they paid the price and continue to pay the price in 2022 for freeing their, themselves, but they did it. Europeans at the time did not even think it was possible. No one in the globe, no one in the planet at the time thought that it was possible, but they did it. They did it in 1804. And in celebration of today, the, the, the irony of the celebration is, is that there is a famous soup <laughs> that is eaten today and it's called the soup jamu. And it's French because that's who ruled over them, the French. The slaves at the time, of course, were only given small meals, mainly of fish and plants. This soup was called the master soup because they couldn't have it. On the day that our people of African descent freed themselves, they cooked the soup jamu. They cooked the master soup and ate it. And so I always tell people that it's just great, you know, if you know of a Haitian restaurant, have a Haitian friend, neighbor, go to their house, celebrate and partake in that soup today because it comes with a rich history and a very rich accomplishment on what it truly represents. All right. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go to um, announcements right now and we're gonna close out. To stay connected to us, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Live Talk Orlando. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel Live Talk Orlando. You want to come on to the show? Join us on the show? You'd like for us to interview you? Then email us at livetalkorl at gmail.com. You can also follow the host on Facebook at Define Your Purpose 2021, on Instagram at Yeremiah Israel, and you can visit the website www.yeremiahisrael.com. Make sure you pick up a copy of The Spiritual Significance of a Name. All right, Minister, let me have you go ahead and well, we sign thank, off. We thank everyone for the day. And as we close out in Kwanzaa, I would just invite everyone to make it a memorable Kwanzaa tonight. I know I'm looking forward to going home. We always close out with a really big meal. We got a big African stew. We got plenty of good food. <laughs> and this is the time when you give some gifts to your children or your grandchildren, meaningful gifts. Because as you know, the educator taught us, make it memorable. Make Kwanzaa a memorable thing for yourself and for your children to remember. All right. Uh, must say it. I mean, a ditto. <laughs> Make sure, and I'm gonna go ahead and part taking some of this soup. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, um, from the host, I'm gonna say prosperity. <laughs> I'm gonna say um, peace and prosperity, and then from live talk, we're out. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? For live. Are you ready? Let's do it. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Are you ready? For the word of the day, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready for live talk? Yeah, because it's about time to set it on. Are you ready? Let's go. For the word of the day, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready? For live talk, yeah. because it's about right. time uh, to set it uh, off.
over lie talk Increase your mentality Put away carnality And increase your spirituality Let's Are you ready? Vibe talk Are you ready? This live talk Are you ready? Live talk Are you ready? Yes sir Are you ready? Live talk for the word of the day, uh, the knowledge and the wisdom will increase your faith. Are you ready for live talk? Because it's about time to set it off.